Hello, everyone, and we are back with part two of this wonderful interview, man. Beautiful, beautiful interview. Um, I'm almost at a loss for words, you know, after hearing her story. Amazing story. Um, wow. So, uh, here we are. This is a continuation of uh, our interview with London Sweetney. Um, for those who are just tuning in, if you missed out on part one, um, you can find part one in IGTV. Uh, it is labeled Human London Sweetney, the Anomalous Lady. Hey, Rosa. Great. Here we are. <laughs> this is me with no filter. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> a little brighter never hurt anyone. <laughs> yeah, a little brighter never hurts anybody, right? I mean, that's why I invested in this light, right? You just here. can't that's move too fast. Think like oh, okay. maybe one of your eyes come off or something. <laughs> I was like, the way you was doing the reflexes, I know. Like, <laughs> you the matrix. <laughs> you <look> like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, let us continue with this wonderful, wonderful interview. Um. So how did you manage to heal yourself after such a traumatic experience? To heal myself? Mm -hmm. mm. Again, one of your open-ended, loaded questions. No, no, um, no. I don't, I can't even say a blanket statement of how to heal. It's, it is mm. a process. I am still healing. It, it's not, it's been eight years and I have dug through things and uncovered things that I didn't even realize still affected me. Um, I feel as though I was always, just because of the type of person I am, I feel like I was always um, open to sharing, um, but Again, looking back, I feel as though I did that almost as a coping mechanism um, in the sense of putting it out there before anyone could assume anything else, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, and I don't think that was healthy. Um, I wore it as, I don't want to say as a badge almost, but I, it was kind of like, Oh no, I wasn't a teen mom. Oh, I was sexually assaulted. Like it was, it was kind of in that vein. And now that I think about it, it's like I feel as though I was kind of utilizing that to, um, like I said, so so people wouldn't assume I was any type of way. Um, just mm -hmm. maybe even from my own um, assumptions and insecurities, if that makes sense. So okay, how do I heal? First of all, um, I am a Christian, um, and so my relationship with God is of the absolute importance. Um, and so in the beginning, I cried um, to myself, because I'm not a crier, um, and it's very hard to share emotions um, with other people. But um, in my in the, my quiet time, um, in the shower, um, and I was scared. Like I've been, I was googling things like while I was pregnant. Like oh, if you're if you're too sad throughout your pregnancy, you know you'll cause your baby to have all of these type issues or whatever. I don't even know if that's true, but I was scared. You know, because I 
I, you know, and people would walk around with a little bump and they're like, oh, like I was not a happy pregnant person. <laughs> like I was still kind of upset. You know, I, I had accepted it, but mm -hmm. it wasn't something that I necessarily enjoyed. Um, so I cried, I prayed, um, I write a lot. Um, that is a form of healing for me. Um, literally I have journals and I'm not even talking like get a journal. Oh, see a journal at the store, get another one. I'm talking filling it up, needing another one, filling it up, needing another one. Like I write all the time, every morning throughout the day, my supervisor mm -hmm. follows me on Instagram. So maybe she won't <laughs> pop in <laughs> on this live, but even <laughs> throughout the day, <laughs> if I think of something or something comes up, you know, I'm writing. Um, so that that is a part of healing for me. Um, I have um, been doing yoga. Um, I um, have started attempting to um, practice meditating, um, doing some breath work. Um, yeah, but honestly, it's not, it's not a blanket process and it doesn't look the mm -hmm. same for everybody. Um, this is very true. it's, but it's definitely necessary. It's definitely necessary to dig, dig deep and pull up those uncomfortable conversations and uncomfortable feelings and emotions that you you try to forget because forgetting is not healing and you mm -hmm. you don't forget like it doesn't even when you heal you don't forget and i and I, like healing is not linear either is um like i said Four or five years ago, if you would have told me uh, or asked me, "Have I healed?" and I'm, I think, cause I think it's been that long since we tried to do the interview, right? Yeah, it's been. <laughs> it's been a couple been years. Year. But, um, <laughs> but um, you like, I thought, you know, I had dealt with things or all of it um and i recently in this last couple of months have dug some more so you know and i feel as though it might be more that needs to come up later so yeah and i guess um if i could say one thing for everybody is give yourself grace um mm. don't feel like you have to be over it or heal quickly you know if somebody gets a paper cut it'll heal maybe overnight but if somebody is burned in a freaking fire you don't expect them to heal like the person with the paper cut like you know so give yourself that same grace it's like allow yourself the process to to really first admit, you know, what happened. Um, and know that what you went through, it was a serious thing. And mm -hmm. you deserve to take just that time to sit in that. Um, and then and then heal from there. Um, Yes. I had to I had to come to grips with that. Um with knowing that no matter how strong I felt, what happened was messed up. Period. Mm. Um and just allow myself to sit in that and see what that means to me. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Opta. Uh, yeah, he's uh, Opta. That's exactly how you pronounce his name. But he's uh, oh, that's his name. 
Yeah, that's his. Yeah, that's, that's his name. He's he actually was uh, interviewed on Humans. Excuse me. But that's I mean, like human. how my <laughs> name was anomalous. Mm -hmm. If I would have looked at his name, it was like Oprah. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was funny. That was funny. Um, what I want to do is go ahead and now get into uh, motherhood. You know. Um, so um. What is uh, what is the most beautiful aspect about being a mother? It's like, nah. <laughs> 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 like, uh, uh, hola, it's okay. Um, beautiful part of being a mother. I feel as though um. They teach you how to literally live in the moment. You could fight it, or you could just see the beauty in it. Mm. So, uh, that's my arch enemy. She stole my name. That's funny. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I feel, for me, because I'm um, super introspective, it's like, I always attempt to... Um, Try to be the the um, most present, I guess, um, throughout my day. And I feel like kids make you do that. You mm. could fuss, scream, fight them, or you could just do it too. <laughs> <laughs> and just chill. <laughs> so I I think that is the coolest aspect. If I even on my most frustrated days, it's like if I really sit and I breathe, it's like, what's happening? Nothing. Mm. <laughs> Nothing at all. No. <laughs> like, you know, if like you said, like um, when you were saying, say you love, um, you know, say how, bleh, bleh, bleh. say that you love people um before it's too late i feel like kids make you think like okay is this really that important if this was the last day would i be screaming over this you know what i'm saying so i think about that a lot and i feel like work through those times repeat that one one more time excuse me i had a, a phone call that came through oh oh no it's okay i think they heard it but um <laughs> no i was saying i feel like my son helps me just stay more in the moment that if i'm really if i really sit down and think about it it's like is that uh, serious so give me one second one second Am I going to be live with everybody without you? Hey, yeah, everyone. You um, preach. I feel that. How do you see? Can you press this number? If I press this number in the corner, will something happen? You should be able to see the followers. Give me one second. Oh, okay. They said my job called me, um, so I just had to let them know that I would be. Um, this will all be cut out of the audio version, um, but I had to let them know <clears throat> that I'm conducting the interviews. Mm -hmm. um, as a mother, how do you practice unconditional love? Mm. That's a good question. They do. I'm reading the comment. They really do. They they know how to just exist. <laughs> <laughs> That's their specialty. It's like no. Um. Um. What? Well, say that again. The question. I'm sorry. As a mother, how do you practice unconditional love? Oh, unconditional love. Um. I don't. 
I, that's a hard question because I feel like for me, it was almost automatic. It's like something I don't, I don't think about. But mm. um, at the same time, you know, hearing other stories of, you know, women that go through postpartum, women that drop their babies off and bounce, you know, I obviously it can't, it can't be automatic for everyone. So I don't know, it's hard to answer that because I don't, I don't think about it. It's like, I would literally, I don't have to practice it. I don't have to take a thought about it. It's like, I would do anything for him mm. un unconditionally. Ah, my supervisor. Hey, Alta. <laughs> 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 or my old supervisor. Sorry, she'll forever be my supervisor. <laughs> what is one lesson that you have taught your son that you hope will resonate with him throughout his life oh I like that um the one lesson um I guess I could say can I say two she you said can say two. um well the one thing that I tell him all the time no matter no matter what, no matter if he's outside um, playing around, trying to run the slide, trying to make a Lego, trying to do his schoolwork, I say, you are capable. Um, mm. And I make him say, I say, I say, I, and he says, I, I say, I am, he says, I am, I say, capable. Sometimes he finishes it, capable, and I'm like, you are capable. Doesn't matter. If it's easy, doesn't matter. If it's hard, you're capable. Um, mm. So I hope that sticks with him. Um, another thing that I, I hope he um, he stick um, that sticks with him is that he is responsible. Um, he's not responsible of other people's emotions. No, that's mm. not that's not what I'm saying. But he is he needs to be cognizant that the energy that he brings into the room will either change it for good or change it for bad. Um and I want him to remember that that no matter where you go, who you're with, how you are as a person affects everyone else, period, no matter if you like it or not. Not mm -hmm. saying that you have to um, be scared or, you know, apprehensive about decisions, but, you know, just how you react when you get angry. Are you lashing out or are you, you know, giving people the cold shoulder, making them feel some type of way just because you feel some type of way. Like I want I want him to to be introspective enough to know that how he is as a person um matters. Um and if he if he remembers that then he could um he can affect people positively throughout throughout his life. Mm. So. Mm, 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 mm. Knowing that he can do it and knowing that his emotions and energy affect everyone around him. Right. You can't control other people's emotions, but you can surely control how you respond. Yes, to you can. So, that is beautiful. <laughs> beautiful lessons. Um, now I wanted to get into uh, you know, something that's a little bit more top secret. <laughs> um, I was wondering um, <clears throat> what encouraged you to become a, 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 a background investigator? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yes, so I was a background investigator. Um, to this day, my son is like, I'm going to be an investigator. And I'm like, you go right on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, honestly, my, my dad um, used to do background investigations. Um, 
and you could see him in the mirror. <laughs> Come on, man. Seriously. Um, <clears throat> my dad used to do background investigations. And, he did? Um, yes, he did. He did not. You weren't born. No, he did not. He was not doing investigation. No, he was Pop not. Pop was the background investigator, and you are taking time no, off he the wasn't. line no, he to wasn't. debate with me. No, he wasn't. Call him. No, go go get um, Gigi's phone and call him on the phone and ask him. Close the door. Love you. not work. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad <laughs> used to be a background investigator. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, ugh. mom, my mom's in here. She maybe could say how many years ago. I don't know if my dad's watching through her phone either, but um, so I was, I knew about it. Um, and, you know, I knew they could, you can work from home. Um, and I knew different companies that I could apply to. Uh, and I knew it was going to be, you know, a long process. Um, so I applied, um, and I started the, the process to get my top secret clearance. Um, mm. and was so the after, hmm? was the process difficult? No, it's not difficult. Um, if you kind of have a clean slate, like, mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't have anything to un up, uproot, um, but doing background investigation investigations or other people um you'd be surprised who has a security clearance <laughs> just <laughs> just saying <laughs> um yeah so it, it can be a lengthy process especially um and i guess i want to say unfortunately for those that um have family um internationally um or, or international background they do pretty extensive um questioning with that um it for me it took about eight months eight to nine months to go through the whole process um so yeah so um i did background investigating in broward county um florida mm. uh for a little over a year um and then i i stopped honestly because um, I was having difficulty with the work-life balance. Mm. Um, I was still homeschooling my son and, um, it, it was just, it was a lot. I was falling asleep with the laptop on my lap, <laughs> waking up, making breakfast, putting the laptop back on my lap. It was, you know, it was just around the clock. Um, and I wasn't getting paid overtime. So I won't yeah. say who I worked with. <laughs> I won't say the company. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it was, I, I would do it again. It was an experience um, that I, I enjoy if I, if I didn't have to balance homeschooling as well. It got difficult. Mm. Oh, one thing I would like to ask is, uh, uh, what is explain to the audience the experience that you've had with homeschooling? Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit of pros and cons to homeschooling? Okay. Um, well, I start. Well, I was. I've been homeschooling my son even before everybody shut down and had to do it for real. Um, mm. But my mom homeschooled my younger three siblings, so I was already um, kind of hip to the idea. Um, I was homeschooled for two years, um, I think fourth and fifth grade, third and fourth grade, something like that. Um, and so the pros, I thoroughly enjoy the fact that I can make my own schedule. Um, if, if he has a doctor's appointment, if I have a doctor's appointment, if, if I want to go to the grocery store. <laughs> you know, um, he does some of his schoolwork, you know, we do what we need to do um, sometimes. Well, oh, not so much anymore, but, you know, we used to do museums, um, just have the flexibility of doing your own thing and, and letting 
learning being fun again. I feel like um, one of the cons of school now is everybody has to be a cookie cutter. It's like it's like the moment you sway off of the beaten path, you're deemed um, uh, all, um, like out of control. In, mm -hmm. You're interrupting the class. Mm -hmm. um, they put you an alternative. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm not one of the. Would you say? You're disturbing the peace. Yeah, yeah. You're just dis, like you're disturbing the flow of the classroom. Did you raise your hand? It's like, okay. Do you, do I? Are you gonna raise your hand at work? No. Like, <laughs> and now everything is move, moving into entrepreneurship. It's like, and no slight because I feel I feel like school does have its place. Um, and I honestly mm -hmm. might want to integrate some form of, um, like another teacher again, just to take the pressure off of me and not have to balance all of it. So maybe mm -hmm. if he could have a teacher, um, for like a, a class or two on the computer, some time away, you know, just, but, um, so that that would be one of the cons that um, mm -hmm. you're you're doing everything, and if you don't have um, an organized schedule, it it really gets it kind of for me anyway, it gets a little stressful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I was always curious about homeschooling and how that worked, um, and how other others feel about it. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was, I am grateful that you was able to supply it with a pro and a con or a couple yeah. of things. I mean, I like it. I like I like the idea. I want to continue, uh, but like I said, maybe integrate some form of um, class on the on the computer that I don't have to sit with him and teach. Mm. Mm. So I wanted to move on and ask you a question. Um, uh, please let the audience know um, a little background information about discoid lupus and how did you find out that you that you had it? Uh huh. Um, so shortly after I had my son, uh, I think he was like maybe three months old, maybe a little younger than that. Actually, um, I started getting. I don't know if you can see like yeah, these things on my hands mm -hmm. um and so they got concerning um they itched just a little bit um and so after it spread i have like a little bit on my arm here um they kind of look like this like right here mm -hmm. um and then I don't know if you can see it like it's in my eyebrows, so it takes like my hair away a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I got a, a I went to a dermatologist, I got a biopsy, um, and they said it was discoid lupus. And the lady's like, Oh, it's okay, it's not cancer. And I'm like, uh <laughs> You're telling me I have a disease over the phone, but it's okay. That's my cancer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was a shock. But honestly, um, for me, it wasn't – it It didn't really hit my confidence too hard because it wasn't anywhere visible. I mean, it was on my hands, a little bit on my arm, Um but it wasn't like anywhere on my face at first. Um, I could wear shorts, it wasn't on my, on my legs. I wore short, you know. So it, it didn't seem like that big of a deal. What happened was um, it started <clears throat> affecting my energy because um, mm. it is an autoimmune disease. Um, that hindsight by it, I mean, hindsight, um, you know, I realized that maybe it was due to the traumatic event and a little stress induced. Um, a lot of the autoimmune diseases um, 
are spurred on by um, traumas and stress, uh, high amounts of stress. Um, and so, yeah, so I got the diagnosis, um, but m my mom and I immediately um, went into looking up holistic um, remedies. Uh, I would literally wake up in the morning, eat breakfast, and feel like I stayed up all night. I, w I would go right back to sleep. It was like I had no energy at all, um, super, super sluggish, irritable, um, all these things. So I actually went gluten-free, um, and I've been gluten-free um, for eight years now. Um, without, I mean, an occasional accident of, um, like, maybe at a restaurant, you know, they them saying it had no gluten in it and then me obviously having effects as if i i had gluten that's the only time in eight years like i've had gluten so i've i've not purposely had gluten um in eight years so i've been gluten free um and so from that it was just for me it was just managing it um as long as i had my energy back this the spots didn't really didn't really bother me so um mm -hmm. you know i never really took any medication for it um or anything so mm. Mm -mm -mm. but it got worse Floyd lupus um affected your uh, your dating life M my dating life mm -hmm. <laughs> your love uh, <laughs> Okay, so you still like look I very, said, very nice, regardless huh? of the, 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 despite the, the discoid lupus, you still look very, very nice. Oh, yeah. thank you. Even though sometimes I'm like, I got the Whoopi Goldberg up here with no eyebrows, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so like I said, at first it was, it wasn't anywhere on my face, mm -hmm. um, but a year after I went to Florida, it got really, really, really bad. Like, even now, um, like, it was worse. It was really bad. It was light all here. You get, like, the butterfly rash. Um, I don't know if you can see, like, light splotches. I don't know. Uh, my mom says no. Um, but it got really bad. And so as far as dating is concerned, I didn't really date that much to begin with. I mean, there were people that were interested, I guess, and wasted my time, but, <laughs> um, but as far as, um, like the skin disorder affecting it directly, I, I haven't had any necessarily anyone except for one guy that's not true okay so there was this one guy that literally told me that they the spots creeped him out and i'm like okay <laughs> That's well, rude. thanks. <laughs> That's really, really rude. <laughs> yeah. um, but that was it. And I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I love you both, Miss Elvis. All oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, it didn't really affect me. I've had, I have three brothers. We call it Jonan here in DC. But when you like, you know, talk about people, <clears throat> have you heard that term, Jonan? Like, you Jonan on me? No. no. Okay. So anyway, we would pick with each other all the time. So having three brothers, I have a backbone. I don't really have a low self esteem. So, um, you know, p other people's opinions don't really don't really bother me. I, like I said, aside from me looking in the mirror and wishing I had eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Now that eyebrows are in. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that, that's about it. So, I mean, I don't think it's affected it, but if it has, they didn't deserve the time of day anyway. 
Oh my goodness. No, it's okay. Hey, everybody. Okay, so let's go through some of the comments. Oh, he's back. It'd be like that. Yeah. It'd be <laughs> like that. <laughs> Use the background. I actually oh. have not been on a date, like, in my whole life. I've been on a double date that I was pretty disappointed about. I thought it was going to be a real date, and it wasn't. But... Yeah. Well, let us continue with another question. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to touch on um one thing before we start closing out the interview is um, you know, I remember earlier you discussing um, hey, you know, Zelda. your um, you know, your loss of the. I remember you discussing the loss of your brother. Um, how did that impact your life? Yeah. Um, every time I look over, I'm actually looking at a picture of him <laughs> uh, that I have up on the wall. But yeah, that that hit really hard. Um, like I said, he was my person. Like he was the one that first person I told when I was pregnant, first person I told that I was about to get an abortion. Uh, First person I call when I got a job. First person I told about a job, possible job interview. First person I, it literally anything, anyone I liked, anyone I didn't like, he, I told him everything. Um, so to lose him, um, woo woo, T. Um, yeah, it was hard. Um, it's been a little over a year now. And so I just try to keep, you know, him alive within me. Um, I talk about him often. As you can tell, um, he's still very much a part of my conversations. Mm -hmm. um, it's still very crazy uh, when I sit and think like, dang, he is really gone. Like death has never hit that close um before um so mm. honestly um it took a toll um and now that i think about it um i feel as though that was a result of um my second diagnosis of lupus sle um which was last year in august which I will be healed from as well. Let that be known. So maybe we can do another interview about that. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I honestly think I just I I bottled a lot. Um, I was attempting to, you know, just in my hand be strong for everybody and not. And I didn't realize I wasn't being it for myself. Um, and so that, I feel as though that resulted in me going to the hospital um, in August of 2020. Um, I had a stroke, a mini stroke. Um, <clears throat> so, but I'm, I'm coming to terms with it now. Um, like I said, I, he's part of my conversations, um, but it was, it was very hard. Um, and, you know, still, it's waves. Grief is not linear. Healing is not linear. Mm. It comes, it goes one minute, you're laughing about that one thing Ricky used to do, and the next minute, you waking up 3 o'clock in the morning, going to send at the picture, and, like, bawling your eyes out. Like, it, it comes and goes. So, mm. um... Yeah, we have, I have two nephews. Mm -hmm. um, he had a son on the way um, when he passed, and he has a three-year-old. Um, so we showered them with love. Like I said, my family is super close, still super close. And I feel as though losing him so abruptly and so quickly, um, he, he was in a motorcycle um, accident. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I said that. Um, 
And um, so it was so quick um, that I feel like we remember, I mean, we will always remember that. And because of that, we love each other even harder um, and make mm -hmm. sure, you know, we have, you know, we're saying, I love you, good night, you know, in our family group chat every night. Um, my little brother still rides his motorcycle. So, you know, he's always, you know, saying he loves us you know before he leaves out just just little things that to remember to always show love because you know like you never know mm -hmm. you never know as we start to wrap this interview down i have two more questions for you um after everything you face what is something you can teach someone else when it comes to enduring struggles Ooh. Um, I would say perspective. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that you're going through something um, and allowing yourself the space to go through, you know, all everything that you need to unpack, um, whatever it may be. Um, but also the perspective, I feel as though it helps me because um, just like when I went to the hospital, uh, when I had the stroke, I went to the hospital, I was in the ICU for three days. I was in the hospital for 16 days total. I could have sat in that and like been down about that, been depressed about that, been, you know, oh, I'm not saying you can't feel bad and it, I'm not saying it didn't suck, but somebody had a stroke and didn't go home to their seven-year-old, like, mm. and died. Mm. And I had the opportunity to sit in the hospital for 16 days. If that makes, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if you, if you, if you try to flip it, it's like, and really think the things mm. that, we experience it it is just that it's an experience and you are continuing to experience it's like mm -hmm. and that's what you need to be thankful for the just the ability that you're still here mm -hmm. i feel like is all about perspective um no matter what I've been through no matter, prayerfully, the plot doesn't thicken. <laughs> prayerfully, <laughs> you know, hopefully it's, it's good things from here on out. <laughs> um, but if not, um, you know, obviously we, we pray for protection, we pray for a long life. Um, but I will always have that perspective of I'm just thankful to be here. Yes, you are still here. You're still mm -hmm. here. As long as you are breathing, as long as you have breath to complain, <laughs> don't. <laughs> 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 like, and here I go. One last question for you. What does being human mean to you? Um, kind of what I just touched on experiences. It's all about, mm. you know, I, I hated the term trust the process. It's like, <laughs> okay, but can I get some type of hint that this is about to be over? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but, um yeah experiences is a part of being human and you'll have good experiences you'll have mediocre experiences and you'll you know you'll have bad experiences but those experiences make life what it is and mm. for me it makes it all worth it um that's what i was telling you about the painting my friend um painted um People fight, people fight for their life and I, you should fight because it's so worth it. No matter what mm. you're going through, no matter what happens, 
keep fighting because it's not going to be like that forever. You're not going to feel like that forever. You're not. You are not. Yeah. And because you are still here, <laughs> mm. that's what you, that's what, that's what you should be thankful for. Well, I wanted to say it's been wonderful interviewing you. <laughs> um, this was for an interview, for a returning interview. This was great. Um, I wanted to tell everybody that um, we're about to play her last song, by the way, uh, for London. Um, yeah, this interview was very impactful. I cannot wait to start editing this and listen back uh, to this interview. Yeah, it was amazing. A lot of jewels were definitely drilled within this interview. Uh, it was a learning experience for me also, learning more about you as an individual. Um, and before I sign off or before we start playing the song, I wanted to let everybody know that um, please remember to cherish the people around you that you find dear to you to strive to be the best version of yourself every day. And last but not least, leave room for the mistakes so that you can grow. And that you are human at the end of the day. And right? it's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. So without further ado, we're gonna play Justin Bieber, Holy, <laughs> featuring Chance the Rapper. Um, and here we go without further ado. Give it a second. Here it is. Video's coming <laughs> out. And it here so. it is. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> How you be like, here it is, and then all of a sudden they're like, where is it? You're like, well, so as long as you <laughs> talk over it, it's okay with the copyright? Yeah. Okay, so I'm a little bit nervous even talking about the copyright because then they're like, let me single out this word. Let me look back at oh, this. Oh, okay. Then no, I'm, then no I'm, I'm joking with you. I'm joking with you. But it's a, I believe there's a machine uh, that they, it runs through real quick while it's being processed. Um, and if you could clearly, because what I noticed was the interview that I did with, uh, uh, that was, um, the interview I did that was stripped down uh, from Instagram, I noticed that I was playing the songs, just playing the songs. I was playing them like pretty loud too, you know, um, and we wasn't really doing any talking or anything over it. So I was like, I was under the impression that that never happened with the other interviews because I was always talking. And so I was like, okay, what's going on with this one? And so when I took a step back and I started looking at things, um, I was like, okay, cool. This is where we messed up at. We were just playing the song randomly. Um, and we didn't, the song was too loud and it was too noticeable. So it got picked up. So This is a good song. Um, this is a very good song. Um Quick announcement for those who are tuning in. We may be uh, should restructuring the way that we do interviews. We will be taking the music out um, of the interviews moving forward um, because I have to build a website and I would like to there to be no conflict uh, with posting the interviews to the website. So. Great interview, by the way. Great interview. Thank you. Um, it went pretty yeah. smooth, I guess. Yeah, it went really smooth, really, really smooth. I wanted to let you talk, you know, because I had the questions set up a certain way, and then I didn't know how many. Like, I had to start deleting questions because I was like, "Okay, she." No, she that's because I talked too much. Yeah, yeah, no, you did. You did very well with the answering. And so I was like, "Okay, well, let me um, let me start shaving some questions away and let you just rock me in." Because originally it was supposed to be only an hour, right? But I was like, wow, you really have? No, we need two hours. It's like a two hour special, you know? Thank you. So this is really good. Thank you, Rosa. I appreciate it. Um, appreciate you tuning in 100%. Um, I can't wait to have you on Campfire Sessions um, in, the, in the near future. Campfire Sessions this month is, like I said before in the beginning of the interview, Thank when I played the first song, um, Campfire Sessions. Uh, this month is focused on the power of choice. So definitely, um, definitely. 
definitely get prepared for that. I'm a little bit tired, <laughs> if y'all haven't noticed. Um, but here we are, so. I actually went to bed at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, she went to bed at 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, that's when I got home. <laughs> yeah, had a long, long night, so. Um, but nonetheless, we're here, right? So. Yo, this is a really cool tune. Uh, I have to admit, I'm like, wow. Um, I would definitely be listening to this one-on-one -on -one by myself um, to, you know, really soak it in. <laughs> Um, Thanks, Ivan. Oh, yeah, yeah, baby. That's this my is... friend in California. Oh, please uh, do share this with your audience, too. Um, please do. Yeah, how do so, I? Um, I can send you it. Um, I already posted it. Um, you could also post it to your story. Yeah, um, I did that. I think I did that. I can do it again. This would be coming out as an IGTV video. Uh, it'll be in my feed. And it'll about, stay uh, there, right? It'll stay there for a while, actually. Yeah, we're getting ready to uh, take out a whole bunch of posts um, because your row has to be produced on the Instagram. You get your own row, and I have mm. to also you know, yeah, design okay. that and put that together. So, yeah, it'll be there for a while, though. So, um, yeah, Next week, we have a great interview, too. Um, please be sure to tune in, people. Um, definitely keep in mind. So, you know... I have this horrible habit that I've done since I was little. Every time I drink water, I hold water in my mouth. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> no, it doesn't matter where I am. I'm like. <laughs> well, listen, signing off. Uh, everybody have a great evening on this Sunday. Um, and this interview will be posted in the IGTV and also on our feed. Um, the soon will be posted to YouTube in the coming week or so, and there will be an audio version to this interview also coming out too. Thank you guys. Um, hey, signing off, Troy in London. Remember, everybody, you are human. Peace.